Hi, here is a list of ideas for producing more eco-friendly products. So, where actually should you start? Uh, obviously, I think this is a very interesting thought process. How can your product's impact be more be eco-friendly in itself? For example, um, you push people to use the bike more often. You make it more you know easier for them, uh, more interesting to them. So if they don't use the bike, uh, sorry, they don't use a car, um, they use their bike, well, great. Uh, if your product is used for five years, how many car trips can you save? This is excellent. Same thing here, uh, these one-time cups, they have to consume materials, they have to be processed, they have to be shipped and kept in inventory and shipped again and and then what happens is they are used one time and then they're thrown away. This is the worst. It goes to landfill, it goes into the rivers, it goes everywhere. If you can make um, some kind of um, product that replaces these cups, that people are more likely to carry around with them to replace the cups, that's great. Over a three-year life, lifetime, for example, this might save so much uh, of everything for the planet. Okay. Um, Another thing is less resources. For example, there's a showerhead. It's a Kickstarter project these days uh, that I saw on Kickstarter. And the showerhead in itself is nothing special if, except for the fact that the droplets are a bit different, the pressure is a bit different, and someone can get a shower and for the same result uh, consume much less water. Well, if this is in place for, I don't know, let's say five years, he can save an enormous amount of water. Well, that's great. Okay, so this is the kind of things you, you should start from. Now, a lot of people um, say, well, I can't really do this kind of thing, so I will finance positive carbon activities, like plant some trees. Uh, you, pl you might plant some you know, entire forests, but in, in terms of eco-friendliness, uh, this one or this one uh, is so much more effective, right? So start with these. Uh, then the materials. A lot of people say, I don't want my product to be made of highly polluting materials. Well, um, two examples here, for example, oil-based plastics, especially some of them like PVC, which because of its manufacturing process involves some um, pretty nasty uh, consequences for the environment. Um, they don't degrade well also. They break down into microplastics. They, uh, they stay in the environment for a long, long time. Uh, they cause a lot of pollution. That's not very nice. So there's some alternative materials and some other types of plastics that are not oil-based that, that are quite interesting. Uh, it's just starting to emerge, but it's it's there. It's, it's it's an option. Also, some materials are abundant and require limited processing. You know, people look at bamboo, wood, and so on, uh, including for not only for decoration products, but also for construction and so on. Very interesting, I think. Now, if you cannot do this on the product, look at the packaging also, right? And by the way, you can do something on the product plus on the packaging, okay? All of these things that I've listed here, all along, all around this, are additive. If you can make uh, just one of them, okay, good. If you can follow five of them, seven of them, it all adds up, right? So packaging materials, back to this, um, some companies have eliminated the retail packaging altogether or have really minimized it. Maybe you don't need so much cardboard and plastic and so on, right? And some consumers are attentive to it and appreciate the effort. Um, make it of recycled material. At least the, the material has already been used. Um, it's the second life or the third life or it's tenth life. Uh, that's, that's, that's a little plus. If it's biodegradable or compostable or something similar, great. By the way, these are different, very distinct topics. Uh, we, we have um, some, some uh, materials on our website to explain all of these terms. And then returnable containers. Um, this is not so common with retail, unfortunately. 
but uh, for industrial use this is something that we've seen several times where the, the products are packed in a certain way and then sent to the downstream supplier that takes the components or the materials and then sends the, the, the containers back. Um, it can be small containers, big containers. I'm not talking about shipping containers here. Uh, but that, that's great. It means you don't have to uh, consume a lot of materials. Uh, it might be used for 10 or 100 times, which uh, really saves a lot. That's great a lot of money and uh, is good for the environment uh, end of life well an example is batteries you know that if you have some used batteries uh, you need to dispose of them in a certain way if you work with a very specialized retail partner for example in a very specialized dis um, circuit people might think of going back there to dispose of their old device let's say uh, when maybe they want to buy a replacement um, and same thing, for example, if you if you have an iPhone, you can bring it back uh, to, to Apple. They might uh, give you something for it and they might actually give it a second life. Maybe change the battery if it's pretty bad, but set it as a refurbished device. Uh, that's great. Recycling. Uh, obviously, if you make it clear that it's recyclable, if you, um, if you can help in some way to, to make it more likely, that's great. Uh, reusing another application or market, try to think of this also. I mean, maybe it's it's reached end of life for the current customer. Maybe they can reuse it for something else. Okay. Uh, and then we go more into how it's made and how it's shipped. So manufacturing process, um, if you can reduce wasted material, that's great. Um, and not just wasted, but also sometimes um, harmful material. For example, if the product has to be washed and it has to use a lot of chemicals, a lot of solvents, um, what, you know, how can you avoid that? And then also, how can you avoid uh, just releasing that into the rivers, you know? Do you work with people who are careful about this? If production is in Western Europe, if production is in North America, it's more likely to be respectful of the environment. If it's made somewhere in the hills, of an Asian country, a low-cost Asian country, it's less likely to be the case, uh, even though China has made a lot of efforts into this over the past three years. A lot of factories were closed, but still, there's a lot of things to, uh, to do still. Uh, energy, if you waste energy, for example, the product has to be heated and then cooled and then heated again and so on. We see sometimes some extremely wasteful manufacturing processes. Make it right the first time. Um, Good quality system. Do you work with people who have to do a lot of rework and scrap a lot of material? Um, I mean, this, if it's reprocessed, it's going to consume more resources, more energy. If it's scrapped, well, you wasted the, 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 the whole material and then also the processing energy that went into it. This is really terrible. So the more you minimize this, the better for the environment. And this really comes down to process controls uh, at the manufacturing level. Do you work with people who are paying attention to this or not? Sometimes <laughs> in China, Vietnam, India, we see some really horrible processes. Uh, renewable energy, well, um, if it's renewable or if it's nuclear, not coal, no gas, that's always a plus, obviously. Um, unsold inventory. What happens to unsold inventory? It's made, maybe it's reworked, it's shipped, it's transported all the way to stores and then it's not sold and then it's scrapped. Well, that, that's, that's the worst, right? So how can you do that? How can you have a lower risk of unsold inventory? Well, making smaller batches. Don't work with people who insist that they're going to make it, you know, 10,000 pieces at a time, maybe, if, especially if it's a fashion product. Fashion products are inherently more risky here, obviously. Uh, have a shorter supply chain. It really helps keep your risk low. Why? Because if you make close to market, um, you don't need large batches, okay? And then you can sell and your supply chain will be more responsive to the needs of the market. If it doesn't sell, stop ordering. If it sells very well, keep the, the, the manufacturer churning out as, as fast as they can. And then when demand levels off, well, um, make sure the manufacturing um, 
plan is updated immediately and they also level off okay anything such as 3d printing local manufacturing uh, ideally they make to demand instead of make to order make to order always involves very high risks but if you make the demand if there's no demand you don't make and then you don't come up with unsold inventory okay transportation if it's uh, made with components i don't know an electronic component coming from malaysia another one from taiwan and then it all goes to a factory in shenzhen it's assembled there then it's put on a truck sent to um, uh, a ship and it's shipped all the way to California and then it's put on a truck to a central distribution center and then it's sent to a regional distribution center and then it's sold to the store and then, you know it this adds up consumes a lot of resources it's quite polluting overall now talking about transportation absolutely avoid air shipments um, so again how do you avoid air shipments because it's so polluting have a short supply chain uh, so that you can send by truck and it's extremely fast. Um, also, production delays. Production delays are probably the um, the number one reason for air shipments. So how do, do you avoid production delays? You work with people who are organized, who have good quality and planning systems, right? If they are late and you absolutely need the products on the shelf, so your customer needs them, well, it's much more likely you're going to have to resort to air shipment, right? Uh, and in a nutshell that's it i hope that was helpful and again if i close with a final thought is that all of these things add up okay if you get uh, you make a little gain here let's say a three percent here a two percent here uh, a ten percent here three percent here i mean everything adds up and then in the end that's how you really move the needle protect the planet I'm always interested in your thoughts, so please write any other ideas or any comments down below in the comments. Thanks a lot.